John, let's start um, our, our, our conversation. Uh, final thoughts on the win against Stennis Muir? Yeah, I thought we played very well. And as I said on Saturday, I think even 11 v 11 in that period of time, we created some good chances and it looked like it was one of the days where we were going to continue doing that. So when uh, Stennis went down to 10 men, uh, those gaps were even bigger and uh, we exploited that. So. That was great. I don't think we can get carried away. I think it was a good win and we played some really, really good football and we scored five goals and sometimes it's difficult against ten men. You know, we've the Rovers have won twice, you know, playing with ten men uh, and so it's uh, not beyond the realm's belief. Many times the ten have actually done well, but we actually exploited it, you know, extremely well and we could have had a, a right good few more goals. Five different goal scorers, I've seen Saturday, it's very good. It means you're not relying on any, any one player. It was disappointing uh, to lose Kevin through the injury. But um, good that then the other guys took it on to go and uh, hit the back of the net. Particularly satisfying day for Chris Duggan uh, after like missing some games through injury, coming back in and playing a big part. Yeah, very much so, yeah. He obviously had to take an injection at the end of his uh, period out you know, to try and get him back playing. and. He's been patient because the team's been winning games and so he's been coming off the bench and, and doing his part. Uh, however, uh, he got an early introduction to the game on Saturday with Kevin coming off and he, he took it with, with both hands, you know. He, he played very, very well. He worked extremely hard. And, uh, you know, he got one goal, could have had three, maybe even four, mm -hmm. you know. He, uh, he did exceptionally well. So, no, it's great for, for Chris when that opportunity arose and then I say he took it with took it with both hands. Good good. And and coming up next it's obviously Airdrie away. Um they're on a decent run of form, three wins in a row and the last time we played there uh, there was a few goals at either end. Um what are you expecting from Ian Murray and his team? Yeah I think they'll try and make it as difficult as we possibly can for us. Yeah, I mean as you say they're they're on a, a, a run a running win of three games in a row. Similar to when they came here. Yeah the last time they came here uh, on December the first, I think it was, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Then they uh, they were also winning three games in a row before they came here, and we managed to win that game. So a difficult game. Uh, the stats would suggest that Airdrie are better away from home than they are at home, but you know we have to test that. We have to uh, you know make their their fans a bit restless. Uh, I think that's what kind of sometimes works against Airdrie as a team. Uh, we've got to try and make their their fans restless and. Uh, we can only do that by going there and, and, and putting on a really, really good performance and working extremely hard. And we'll not get anything if we don't work hard in this game. Mm, yeah. The, the main, um, the main injury outcome of, of last Saturday's game was Kevin Nisbet. Uh, um, just give us a, a, a recap on his progress of that hamstring injury. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he got a scan on Tuesday. Uh, however, you know the, the physio testing him as as they do. Uh, suggesting that the injury would take three to four weeks to come back so it wasn't a massive tear it was a slight tear which is obviously much more beneficial and better than how it looked on Saturday uh, just the way that Kevin was presenting after the game he looked like he was in a, a hell of a lot of pain on crutches uh, which is all sort of uh, precautionary uh, but you know he was very much down in the dumps uh, so all these things you thought mm, this could be a real real lengthy injury or a serious injury but as it turns out it's, it's not as bad uh, but you know he's certainly looking at the three to four weeks period and with that three to four week period out has that in any way changed your thinking on the potential recruitment that might have to happen not not in three or four weeks it have been 12 weeks maybe you yeah. know but three to four weeks hopefully we can get over that period of time and keep Chris Duggan and Liam Buchanan and Louis Vaughan uh, fit, you know. Uh, we don't want a, another spate of injuries, you know. Uh, it's unfortunate that Kevin's got injured. We've not been really been getting an injury like that, you know. That's a bit of a disappointment. Uh, so, no, I don't think there's any, you know, knee-jerk reaction to try and go and get another striker in uh, because of that. Uh, if it had been 12 weeks, i say, may, may have been a different conversation, but... I think three to four weeks. Hopefully, we can get over that and then get the, you know, get all the strikers back from full strength. Yeah. And in terms of other recruitment, we know that uh, Keaton Wright is back at Rangers. Kevin Silva is about to go back to Hearts. 
any progress to report on? Well, n- not not nothing definite. You know, we're working on it all the time. It's a, it's a key position for us, but they're hard to come by. You know, but we will have someone in place by this time next week. Right. Okay. Good. And and other recruitment. Uh, Tony Dingwall um, has been here on trial. Um, how has he looked? And uh, what do you think? There? Yeah, he was here last week, uh, and he did very well. We had a conversation with him. He's uh, gone back up to to Dingwall. Over the weekend, obviously, and he's been back there training. So, we've been in negotiations with him, so it's uh, just a matter of watching the space. Okay, right. And um, a final point um, we're leaving the best to last in some ways. Um, uh, a lot of talk about um, our existing players and how long they're going to stay for. Um, um, what's your reaction to the news of uh, Cal Benedictus and Louis Vaughan signing on for extended periods? Yeah, it's great news, and that. Uh, puts all the social media uh, to bed, so to speak, with regards to they're going here and they're going there and all the rest of it, you know. The Wraith fans will be delighted that both guys have signed uh, extended contracts. So that pleases me, you know, a lot, a hell of a lot, you know. Uh, Both very, very important players. Uh, Lewis would probably have signed earlier if he hadn't come across his, you know, his uh, operation, you know. Uh, So... There's been a bit of speculation, but as I said, you know, last week, you know, there's no one actually approached me personally with regards to Kyle or Lewis. But we are glad to get them tied up, uh, and everyone can relax, knowing that they're going to be here and uh, you know playing their football out here for the foreseeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Great. And 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 and, I'll, and one final question that I've just thought of: uh, tickets are selling well for the the cup tie. Have you got half an eye on the cup tie, or is it all about Airdrie this week? No, not at all. No, it's all about Airdrie. All about Airdrie. Yeah, I mean, it's good news if the tickets are going well. Hopefully, we can, as I said before, hopefully we can have whatever amount of fans, you know, and family bring. Hopefully, we can have at least one more. You know, hopefully. Uh, so, you know, it's. We are playing Airdrie this week, and there's absolutely no way that uh, our focus is any, uh, you know, moving from that. But you know, if you're thinking about coming along, I think it'll be a cracking game. So uh, hopefully, you know, snap up the tickets as, as quick as you can. Great. Thanks for that, John. Good luck for the weekend. Cheers, Neil.